Hour 1. There is only one news story on every website, newspaper, and TV screen. The flowers are blooming everywhere, all across the globe. Every country, every landmass, the bitter cold of the Antarctic gives way to a glowing rainbow of petals. The Sahara Desert and Death Valley become beacons of thriving technicolor plant life. The highest mountains, the lowest valleys, the darkest caves, the flowers even burst free from the concrete of cities, as if reminding us that really it was never our world. We were only borrowing it. And today, our lease is up. This is SCP-001, object class, unnecessary. It was foretold by tales from other dimensions, a distant future coming down the tracks towards us. And today, the train has reached the station. Nobody's reporting on how the economy or the stock market is doing today. No point. Celebrity scandals have faded away into nothingness. Greedy businessmen, lying politicians, brutal tyrants. None of them are making the headlines today. The very last headlines. The world gone beautiful. And what a shame. It takes the end of it all to make us realize what really matters to us. That's right. You're looking at the end of the world. But it's okay. Don't panic. Take a deep breath in and out. It was bound to happen eventually, so no point worrying now. Even the Foundation knows that this just isn't something they can stop. So instead of asking things like how can we prevent this or do we have any final tricks up our sleeve, let's ask a different question entirely. What would you do if you knew that you only had 24 hours until all life on Earth ends? Think hard. After all, even if you never live to see the flowers bloom, a final day will still come for you, just as it does for us all. Hour 6. A D-Class sits alone in his cell when he sees the flowers growing out of the ground. Normally he'd assume that this meant he was in some kind of foundation experiment, but not today. Everyone on Earth had an innate sense that the time is now. A kind of gallows calm spreads out over everyone and everything. It's over, and that's okay. We all knew it was going to happen eventually, right? He sighs and gives a slight smile. Those flowers sure are beautiful. That's when he hears footsteps outside his cell approaching. A key slides into his cell door and opens. There stands Dr. Gears, holding a bottle of wine and two glasses. Anyone who knows him might think he's been replaced by some kind of shape-shifting anomaly, or had his mind taken over by a powerful cognito hazard. But no, it's him. The famously cold Dr. Charles Ogden Gears. Dr. Gears says, Come on, it's a lovely day out there. It'd be a terrible waste to spend the whole thing cooped up in here. It'd feel like a trick on any day but this. The D-Class nods and follows the doctor out. The normally oh-so-stoic Foundation senior researcher pours himself and the D-Class each a glass of wine and asks, What's your name, by the way? I don't think I ever checked. The D-Class replies that his name is Harold. The two smile and chat as they exit the now empty D-Class containment wing. Everyone else is outside already. Researchers, guards, administrative staff, and D-Classes, all rubbing elbows, enjoying the beautiful sun on their last day together. Elsewhere on site, a flock of SCP-514 is released, just as identical flocks are being released from every containment site all over the world. They've prepared it all for this very day. SCP-514 is a special breed of homing pigeons created by the Mana Charitable Foundation, which have the power to suppress aggression for those within their field of anomalous influence. And now millions of them are flying all over the world. After all, there's no point fighting on a day like this. There is no future left to secure. People always told them there would forever be hope until the flowers bloomed. No situation was ever truly over until the world went beautiful. But in the absence of hope, there was something even more inviting. Total, absolute calm. The Site-19 personnel sit together and watch the flowers bloom. Hour 12. All militaries call a global ceasefire. Soldiers from opposing sides hug and shake hands in flowery fields that once seemed choked by death and blood. Borders fade. Bitter rivalries turn to dust. Korea unifies. All is quiet in the Middle East. 
Gangsters and drug cartels drop their weapons and return home to their families and friends as flocks of SCP-514 fly above. What good is all the blood money in the world on a day like this? Wardens walk cell to cell through all the world's prisons, granting people their freedom again, sometimes after lifetimes of not having it. They taste the air again, feel the sun on their face. They close their eyes, drink it in, and walk among the flowers free men. Locations of Marshall, Carter, and Dark Limited close their doors and shutter their windows worldwide. For the first time in as long as any of them can remember, they turn their signs to closed. They've earned a day off. Everyone has. The Chaos Insurgency rolls up their plans and burns them. They drop their weapons and throw away their tactical gear. As they do so, they can't help but question themselves. What was it all for in the end? What was any of it for? All the fighting and bloodshed and death. We did it day after day, only to do it again the next day. What silly reasons we killed and died for. What silly reasons indeed. The Global Occult Coalition dismisses its staff, thanking them for their service and telling them to go spend their last hours with the ones they love. Like the Foundation, they accept that this is the one true final end. No ritual to stop, no monster to fight. No evil extra-dimensional entity to thwart. Just go outside and smell the flowers, while you still can. The Serpent's Hand are similar. They decide after decades fighting a losing battle, they'll spend their last day in the Wanderer's Library, reading some of their favorite volumes. All these wonderful stories, now left for other Earths to read. Their own stories would be counted among them in the end, and they take great comfort in that. In a sense, everyone will live forever in the pages of the books in the Wanderer's Library. Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting releases all of its freaks and clowns from their twisted grasp to go and live out whatever small dreams and tiny pleasures they could find over their last hours. They have no foundation of fear anymore. Nobody minds their strange appearances and odd behaviors. Why would anyone waste such a beautiful day judging others on the last day on Earth? There's nothing left to prove. Sarcasists drop their ancient fleshbound tomes, and acolytes of the Broken God put down their gilded blades. On the slopes of Siberia, the jungles of Peru, and the most isolated beaches of Mexico, twisted flesh finally touch living metal in the spirit of husbandry. Their eternal war is at its end. In the face of the blooming world, they didn't seem so different after all. The agents of the Dr. Wondertainment Corporation predictably chose to spend their last hours sitting around and playing with toys together. Time well spent, if you ask us. In a highly secretive location, perhaps the most heavily secured place in the entire world, the 13 members of the legendary O5 Council decide to just sit and talk. Anyone who knows anything about this secretive cabal can tell you. The O5 Council has spent a considerable portion of their very, very long lives trying to figure out ways to dodge and cheat death. But now, facing a death they can't dodge, the same calm washing over the rest of the world has finally reached them too. All they can really think this time is, well played, Reaper, well played. As they chat about the kind of inane, casual things that they haven't had time to discuss in years, O5-3 suggests inviting the Ethics Committee over to join. Nobody disagrees. Hour 16. It isn't just the D-Classes. All sapient and non-aggressive SCPs have been released from containment, free to spend the last of their time as they wish. Tens of thousands of anomalous individuals are released from containment sites all over the globe. It'd be the greatest victory that the Serpent's Hand could ever ask for, if they weren't all too busy reading to notice. SCP-105 Iris Thompson finally returns to her parents. The Foundation had fed them the lie that their daughter had died many years before, but as Iris had a tendency to do, she was ready to work a miracle. Her parents embrace her with open arms. They'll spend their last hours together catching up on what's happened since they parted ways and making up for lost time. They couldn't be happier. SCP-1867 Lord Blackwood, the fantastical sea snail, is delivered into a warm rock pool near the site where he was being contained. There he might finally have one more grand adventure before all is said and done. Though afterward, he may not have the time to tell anyone about it. A terrible shame, really, because nobody spins a yarn like Lord Blackwood. 
the non-aggressive little misters run free. Mr. Fish eagerly returns to his native Boston, Massachusetts, where he enjoys one more lobster sandwich before the end of the world. Mr. Headless decides to go hat shopping because he wants to look good for the apocalypse. Mr. Lost finally settles down for the afternoon, deciding that, just this once, he's earned himself a rest. SCP-2800 Cactus Men returns to Edinburgh to spend his last days picking up litter and helping old ladies cross the street. SCP-3663 The Tunnel Monster walks the streets of his hometown, searching for an old friend, hoping to reunite before it all ends. SCP-073 Kane decides to take a walk outside for the first time in thousands of years. He can't help but smile, as the bright, colorful life beneath his feet is growing faster than his presence can kill it. What a truly beautiful day. Knowing that there's no longer time for cults to form and bother him, SCP-2662 Cthulhu decides to take a break from his intense Minecraft session and go take a walk outside. It feels so good to have the sun on his tentacles once more and to feel the lush green grass under his suction cups. He shakes his head thinking once again about the irritating cults that had been pestering him for decades. What kind of idiot would want him to destroy a world like this? SCP-343, also known as God, sighs and looks over all his creation for what he knows to be the last time. His mouth curls into a smile as he thinks, Well, we had a pretty good run. Still in a cell, SCP-049, the Plague Doctor, puts his feet up and decides to relax. The pestilence will soon be taken care of. On some animalistic level, below thought, below even instinct, SCP-096 feels grateful that no gaze will ever fall upon it again. Somewhere fizzling in a vat of acid within a highly secure containment chamber, SCP-682 is feeling, for the first time in its hellish existence, a sense of profound relief. The pain, the hate, the rage, the constant termination attempts, it all be over soon. Hour 23. People gather in the streets. They laugh and dance and sing as the moon shines, fat and white, far above. Deep in their hearts, they quietly contemplate the end of all of this. But why worry? Why spoil the fun? There's no future left to worry about. Strangers become as close as family in the end. Human or otherwise, anomalous or non-anomalous, Chaos Insurgency agents have last suppers with ex-Serpent's hands and GOC operatives. There is no hate left, no violence, no malice, no cruelty. The greatest tragedy in all of this is that it took the ultimate end to bring it out in people. But why worry? Why worry? Seconds pass, then minutes. The world buzzes. It hums. Trillions of creatures doing everything they'd wanted even though it won't last. In the face of the true end, the world has never been more alive. Hour 24. Silence. Forever and ever and ever. Good night. We'll end this video the way it began, by putting a question to you. How would you spend your last 24 hours on Earth? Let us know down in the comments, because it'll happen to all of us, eventually. Now go check out SCP-001 Which is the Real 001, and SCP-001 Ouroboros Cycle, the full story compilation for more journeys into the surprising and varied world of SCP-001.